What we're now going to do is start talking about bound services. And uh, this is what the grad student's assignment is based on. Of course, you didn't have to wait for this lecture because you could watch the videos that we already had online. So you could already know a lot of this stuff. This is just the live version, not the studio version. By the way, I went, to, I went to see Willie Nelson a couple weeks ago at the Ryman. And before his show, he was playing Willie Nelson songs, which is kind of weird. So they're, like, they're playing Willie Nelson songs before the show, and then he shows up and he, then he plays them live again, right? So it's it sort of a total Willie Nelson immersion. Um, the other funny part was at the end of the show, he finishes up with you know, sort of an encore, and he sings a bunch of classic gospel songs like... Uh, Will the, will the circle be unbroken, and I've seen the light. And then he finishes up his entire show with Roll Me Up and Smoke Me When I Die, which if you know anything about Willie Nelson is actually rather funny. And the fact that he followed a bunch of gospel songs with that one is even more funny at some level. All right, so bound services allow you to be able to do more interesting conversations with clients, n normally activities. We're going to look at this in the context of a unique ID generator service. So it's a service you could use to generate unique IDs, and we'll talk more about that. This is an example of a unique ID up here, incomprehensible, but um, it comes in very handy for a lot of purposes. You can see other versions of this app if you want to poke around online um, to see other things. So let's first talk about the application. So here are the main parts of the application. There's a uh, unique ID generator activity. That's what interacts with the user. You basically click a button, and that starts the processing in the background. It uses the unique ID generator service to do its thing. That's what actually uh, encapsulates the heavy lifting. But the heavy lifting is actually done by this request handler, which runs in the background in a pool of threads. And when the request handler is done, of course, it sends back the result via a messenger to a reply handler, which is going to display it to the user. So this should all start looking rather canonical after a while, because all the applications have a very similar uh, structure to them. They follow certain patterns. This is a complicated example, because it uses a bunch of things, but it's pretty cool. And we'll look at it from different perspectives. And you should take a look at the source code, which is all available here. Uh, those of you who are doing assignment number for the grad version might poke around at this stuff. It's, it's not a drop, drop in replacement by any means, but you'll see a lot of the various ideas um, alluded to if you read this code. It's sort of like listening to classical music. You have a number of movements in a symphony, and there's light motifs that are anticipating the later things that come. And this is a good example of that. All right. So here's kind of a high level view. By the way, does anybody know the name of this picture? It does look like a big, big blue marble. You're right. That's probably where that phrase came from. What's that? Earthrise. Earthrise. Yep, Earthrise. It was a picture taken from, I forget whether it was Apollo 9 or Apollo 11 or one of the Apollo missions. And it was a very famous picture. Um, so what happens here is when you, call on, when you start the application, the on start call in the application activity causes the activity to bind to a service, which launches the service. And that causes the onBind hook method to get call in the service, which returns back a messenger to the client, to the activity, via the onServiceConnected call. You'll get to know this. It's pretty cool. Um, and then that's, that's how things get connected. So that's the binding process. It's a handshake-based binding process. Once the binding is done, then when you click the button that says Generate Unique ID, that causes a message to be sent via the messenger that was passed back by the on-service connected hook method. That goes to the service. It's handled by the handle message method, as usual. That goes ahead and generates a unique ID in the background. And it sends a reply back to the activity. And the activity then goes ahead and displays the ID. So that's basically the steps that are involved in what we're about to look at from a high level. Questions? Pretty straightforward. All right, here's a more detailed look at all this stuff. So what happens here is, um, you know, you start off by calling the, uh, this is, the, you call bind service, which goes over to on bind. That passes back the callback, or sorry, that goes ahead and gets a reference to the messenger object, passes it back via a callback. And then at that point, the callback picks up, um, stashes this thing in a local field. And then when the 
method is called to display the, or to generate the ID. It sends the request to the reference, which goes ahead and dispatches it here. And then the result comes back to the client. So that's just a different view. One of the things you find really helpful when dealing with concurrency is to sit down and write the steps out. So just a little tip for everybody who's trying to debug their assignment four or and anything that we do that relates to concurrency. You know, don't just sit there and stare at your program when it's broken. Put breakpoints, sit down and you know, write out the logic of what you think is going on. See where things are going wrong. If you're really brave, learn the Android debugger, which is very helpful. Um, but at the very least, put log statements in your code. And that way, you can kind of trace to see what's happening and where you're getting stuck. And uh, if you look at the log cat output, it'll often tell you useful things like you know, null pointer exception, thread die. That's a, a common one, which means something has gone drastically wrong. And usually, it'll tell you the line of code where the exception occurred. And then you have to go back and go, why did I have a null pointer there or null reference? What was the reason for that? Well, it's probably because you gave it a goofy URL or, or something else, right? So learning to write these things out like this is really helpful because most people's brains do not um, think about code concurrently. Our brains work concurrently, but it's hard to think about concurrent things in our heads. So it's often better to, to write them down and kind of step through it and pretend you're a, you're a runtime emulator. Here's how you actually program this whole thing. So we'll start by showing how you launch a bound service. So you know, we, we're going through a di couple different ways to look at this stuff, each getting more and more detailed into the actual implementation. So right here, we're kind of looking at the high level view, the activity um, on the, in the on start method calls bind service, passing in the intent and something called a service connection. We'll talk more about that. And the make intent method goes in the service. Again, that's a common pattern, right? You put a factory method in the service, you call that, that makes the intent, and that way you as an application programmer don't have to know, don't have to care how the intent is made. All you know is you got one that'll be set up to start the service when you call start service. That's a pattern, we'll talk more about that later. So the clients have to provide the right service connection object, and uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. The service connection needs to be bound to the main thread, which typically means you have to create it like in the onCreate method or, or some other place that's going to be in the main thread of control. It needs to get, ca get called back in the main thread. If the service isn't already running, it's automatically activated by the activator pattern. Bind service does not block, which means that you call bind service and control comes right back to the activity event loop that you have to do other stuff. Here's how you initialize. So that was the client side. That was how you get things bound from a client point of view. There's actually more to it than that, but that's the starting point for it. Here's how we bind things from the service point of view. So the key methods here are on create and on bind. This is on the service side. Let's talk about the service. Here's on create. Lots of ways to do this. This is just the way that I'm going to be doing it. So the first thing we do is we make ourselves a new messenger that has a request handler. It encapsulates. Then we do a little bit of stuff here. This, this stuff is done basically just to um, uh, clean up a few things in the, in the background so we can run this stuff in concurrently. And then we go ahead and create a fixed size thread pool so that these things will run in the pool of threads. Here's the on bind method. This takes the request messenger that we made here and gets a binder to it. Now, this is one of those things where you just have to believe that that's the way it works. You could look at the code for a long time and not figure this out. You just have to know that, ah, if I have a messenger, there's a get bind method that returns something that can be used as the reply to the on bind hook that's called. So this is going to um, return this binder to this messenger. And that's going to come back to the activity on the client side. And you'll see what that does later. Now, this is kind of weird. On bind is only called the first time an activity binds to a service. Any other time you call bind service, it just reuses whatever was, was cached. So on bind has to return something, and you have to live with it the rest of the time that the service is running. It's only called once. That's a little bit confusing in some cases. All right, so we did a bind service on the client. That causes the on create method to get called back on the bound service, and it causes the on bind method to get called back, which returned a binder reference 
back to the client. Now we're going to look at the client's handling of the return value. Yes, when? Uh, because there are services. So the question is, why don't we combine on bind with on create? The reason is because there are services, in fact, a whole class of services, in fact, started services that don't use on bind. So there's no need to associate them. So here's the client side of this. So when the um, generator service goes ahead and sends back its results, then this is going to come back to the client. And before I forget this, let me switch this around. This code actually runs over here. All right, that's better. So now we're talking about the activity side of the house again. So when this guy gets called back, his on service connected method is invoked. This is a hook method on a connector, a software connector called a service connection. And that turns around and takes the I binder that was passed from the on bind method on the service and then lets you encapsulate that back in a messenger, which is stored as a reference in a field in the activity client. So this is an example of handshaking, right? Client calls bind service. Service creates binder reference via on bind passes it back through the Android frameworks. It now is received by client activity via callback on a service connection as on service connected. Client activity stashes away this thing as a messenger. And now they're connected. So it's basically a protocol. It's like a handshake. They're handshaking and exchanging uh, artifacts so they can talk to each other. Any questions about that? It's, it's very subtle. And there's actually cooler ways to do it than this, but we won't confuse the issue now by going into them. Yes? What stops you from calling bind service on a start service? Uh, nothing start, stops you from calling bind service on a started service. In fact, there are services that are hybrids. They're both started and um, bound. The music service in Android, for example, is one like that. <clears throat> so the main reason why that would normally not work is that a started service, if it's a purely started service, implements on bind to return null. So if you call bind service on a started service that returns null, you'll get back nothing useful and you won't be able to establish a connection. So that's nothing stops you, but it won't give the right result. You know, nothing stops you from driving your car at 100 miles an hour into a wall, right? <laughs> but uh, it's not a good idea. So, All right. Now when things disconnect, then on service disconnected gets called back. And uh, this is great. I think there's a... A limited shelf life, as I always say, for how long these things run. There must be a, there's probably a memory leak in the Mac version of PowerPoint. And after it's run for a while, it just decides to shut itself down. So that's my guess. All right. On disconnected gets called back when the process hosting the service goes away. In which case, you know, it's disconnected and you don't want to talk to it anymore. All right, so now that we've got things connected, right, now that we've connected the, cl the activity client and the service server, the win for bound services becomes more clear. And the reason that they're doing all this handshaking and protocol stuff is so that then they can converse back and forth with each other in a very convenient way. So you can basically have a, a client service connection and you can exchange information. Does anybody know what, what is cryptically being represented here? Sauron. Sauron, yes. So talking to, uh, who, who might he be talking to? Saruman, there you go. Saruman, uh, Pippin, uh, Aragorn, lots of people could be talking to them. So that's, that's a client service conversation. Now, there's a couple different ways to communicate. For right now, the communication mechanisms we're using are generic mechanisms using messages and messengers, which is a generic way of doing things. So you end up passing messages back and forth. There's also a more type-specific way of doing things. So you can also have things that are type-specific. We'll probably talk about those in the course, and we might even use it for assignment five, which should be out 
very shortly Will's putting the finishing touches on the shells and the description and so on. So it should be out very soon. But um, the typed version is, is actually cooler and so I hope we have a chance to talk about that. If you use the typed version then you actually define interfaces that are statically typed and then you can make method calls and the method calls look more or less like regular method calls that are not going across address boundaries but instead they're going across address boundaries. So it gives you a way to do inter-process communication via mechanisms that look suspiciously like non-inter-process communication, just making method calls on objects. And we'll talk more about those. If we don't have a chance to get to that in this class, because we'll eventually run out of time, there's a bunch of cool videos. And if you're ever doing an Android project and you need to know how this works, you can watch the videos. Under the hood, there's a bunch of patterns like proxy and broker and so on, and we'll talk about those later. In our particular case, going back to the example we're looking at, we have a pair of messengers that communicate. We have two of them. And on the, uh, on the service side, you create the messengers. And these are request handlers, as we'll see later. And that's what gets returned from the onBind method. On the client side, there's a reply handler. So think about how this works. The service, this guy, he's going to create a messenger that will handle requests from the client activity to generate unique IDs. And then he's going to turn around and get the results back via the reply handler. So the message that goes from the activity to the service will contain a reply handler messenger. And then when the service receives that request, it'll then do what's requested, which in this case is to generate a unique ID. And then it'll pass that back via the reply handler. So that's not unlike the stuff we've been doing. It just allows much more long-term interactions without all the overhead of starting up services via intents and so on. So it's a little bit lighter weight than the started service model, the intent services model. But it's basically got the same type of feel to it. All right. So you make a messenger. And notice this is kind of cool. You make a message on the activity client side, and then you fill in its reply to field with a new messenger that points to a reply handler. And that's used to keep track of where you're going to come back to. And then you go ahead and send the request, which contains the reply handler. Stopping bound services is much easier than trying to deal with started services. So all the crazy stuff we talked about with the, the uh, thread pool service and stop self, all that stuff just goes away. The way it works is um, a bound service doesn't run in the background indefinitely, but instead its lifetime is managed automatically by Android. And it's, auto it's managed automatically by whether or not there are any clients that are still bound to the service. And as long as there's a client that's bound to the service, the service lives. The minute that the, the last client goes away, the service dies. Can anybody think of uh, an example from the Harry Potter book series that's kind of like this? A horcrux, exactly, right? So when your last horcrux goes away, you evaporate into mist or whatever happened to Voldemort. I never exactly remember that, but good example. So there's a, there's a, there's a reference count, number of horcruxes, you know? It starts with eight, seven, kind of counting down. Um, let's see, all right, we'll wrap up this stuff. So there's a method called unbind, which, um, returns false, and there's, uh, y there's a service. The service has a method called unbind, and you can have it return true, and this enables rebind to be called. This is kind of a crazy thing. Um, you can use this hook if you have a service that's both a started service and a bound service. The best example I know of is the Android Music service, which is both started and bound. And the reason for that is that they want to start things up and let them run indefinitely. So once you start up the music service, it just keeps running. But then they want to be able to do um, typed communication via AIDL to actually do things like play, stop, resume, rewind, all those kinds of things. So it's, it's, kind, of a cool, uh, it's kind of a cool use of bound and unbound services. A bound service is destroyed when there are no more clients bound to it. So when the last client calls unbind uh, service, it goes away. And that causes its on destroy method to be called, and that shuts things down. So whenever you're done, of course, you should call unbound service. And a good place to do that is in the on stop method. All right. So that, wow, that really turned out great. So that's the end of this discussion. What we'll talk about next time at the beginning of classes, I'll show you the code for this stuff, and you'll see it's pretty cool. 
And then we'll also um, start talking about the next set of things in the course, which will be about patterns. And you, that'll give you the basics to understand the next assignment. Quiz on Wednesday, uh, oh, the things we covered since the last quiz. <laughs>